What is a career roadmap and how is it going to make a difference to what area of tech you're going to go into? Well, I'm about to go over the top eight highest paid areas in tech this year, starting in the most well paid area to the least, but bear in mind the least well paid area in tech is still paid pretty well compared to many other industries. I'm also going to tell you a bit about the personality type who would suit those careers, whether I would do it or not as a senior software engineer, whether I would go into these other areas and why I would not. And it's going to give you some real insight into those different areas and uh, whether you will enjoy them as a career. Let's start. Well, let's first get this straight. You work for money, I work for money. Going to work is a transactional process. You shouldn't be shy about that. You want to get paid your worth. So let's go through the list. Starting with a career path I didn't even know existed and I'm a senior software engineer. And that is being a cloud architect. But what is a cloud architect? I hear you say. And I hear you say that because I asked the same thing. Well, a cloud architect designs and builds the cloud strategy for a company. A bit like a solutions architect, but focused on cloud processes and outcomes. Now I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. It's like, isn't that just a glorified DevOps engineer? I thought that too, but apparently not. DevOps engineers think about the how. Cloud architects think about the what and the why. Therefore, the role is different. It's a different approach to thinking, to logic, to implementation, to design. It's completely different. Who would this career path be suited to? Well, people who like thinking in design, people who like thinking about the process, people who like implementing overall strategies, dealing with stakeholders will do absolutely wonderful in this. And also consultants working their way up. It's less about code, more about direction. Would I do this job? Probably not. I like writing code. I like building things. I don't want to be in meetings all day. I don't want to be designing high level architecture, even though I do that as a software engineer, but then I get to implement it, not just hand it off to somebody else. Does it pay well? Well, it's number one on our list for a reason. It's the highest paying lucrative area of tech this year. But what if cloud isn't for you? It's not for everyone. Maybe you're a bit more geeky and that's fine because number two on the list has got you too. Number two, data scientist. Data science is a buzzword that you're probably used to hearing by now. It gets thrown about in sort of high level circles. Oh, we need a data scientist. But what does a data scientist actually do? Well, they use statistics, analysis, and computer science to analyze data and make decisions proven by that data for the benefit of the company. Basically, they use maths to make decisions that make companies a lots of monies. Who is this career path suited to? I'm sorry, but nerds, massive nerds. Would I do it? Nope. If the finer details of data, science, and maths get you off, then a data science is a perfect career for you. Now that's not bashing them. I work with plenty. They are very intelligent people and they do very important work. It's just not for me. Covered two of the highest paid tech roadmaps for this year, but you pretty much have to be Sheldon Cooper to be on that vibe. So are there any other tech careers that we can do for us mere mortals? Well, yes, yes there is, but probably not what you're thinking. Number three of the highest paid tech roadmaps for this year, Machine learning engineer. Now I know what you're thinking. Don't look at me like that. You just said you don't have to be a super genius. We're just us mere mortals can do it. Well, we can. Machine learning has become more accessible for people because there's so many libraries out there. As long as you enjoy the raw fundamentals of writing algorithms and making tiny changes in code to see an output further down the line, this could be a career path for you. What does a machine learning engineer do? Well, they design, build, and implement machine learning models. And because we're in the age of AI, also large language models, and they actually work quite closely with data scientists. Who is this career path suited to? Well, I've already sort of stated that it's for people who like raw computer science, and I will double down on that. If you enjoy writing algorithms and you enjoy making making small changes to systems to see a very minute change, positive or negative on the output of it, then this could be a career path for you. I do it, I'm a bit torn. I love writing code, I do, but I love building things with my code, not just building a sort of data processing or machine learning pipeline. I enjoy building physical things like on a UI or even the backend systems that come together for people to use. So. I'd be tempted to do it, but I'm not sure if I'd be happy doing it. Okay, number four, and you Mr. Robot lovers out there are gonna love this one. Yeah, you guessed it, cybersecurity. But not just cybersecurity, more specifically, Blue Team. Or as they're also known, cybersecurity engineers. But what do they do? Well, the primary role is to protect network systems and data from bad actors. Who are bad actors? People trying to extort data, people trying to steal money, or people trying to do nefarious things to companies or individuals. But there's also a lot of monitoring systems, firefighting, and by firefighting, I don't mean <laughs> I mean, as in systems going down, pipelines breaking, having to figure out what made it go down, relaunch the system at three o'clock in the morning, that kind of thing. Isn't quite what you see on TV, but you're doing a good thing. Do you need to be Mr. Robot to do it? No, there are so many courses out there. It's a field you can break into from self-learning. Will a degree help you in it? Quite possibly. There is a lot of legalities and legislation around data breaches, so it's good to brush up on it. But ultimately, there are tons of courses out there which you could get started with today. Who would this career path suit? Well, if you like to write less code, monitor more systems, be an integral part of the safety of an organization, then this is a shout for you. 
it will probably make you feel good. Would I do it? No, definitely not. I, I you know, I'm gonna say it again and again in this video, I think I like building things and I really don't like monitoring systems. I really don't like firefighting. I spent time as a data engineer. It's not for me. But then sometimes I wonder what is for me? Well, we're gonna cover that at number five of the most lucrative areas of tech this year. And that is tech bro, of course. I mean, software engineer, of course. There are a ton of different fields in software engineering. You could be a front end developer, a back end developer. You could be a uh, app developer, whether that's on Android or iOS, the list goes on and on. And what will you be doing? Well, you'll be building the systems and apps that everybody in the world integrates or uses with today. That could be a front end for chat GPT. That could be WhatsApp chat messages, or it could be WeChat if you lived in China. Who would it suit? Well, anyone who likes to write code and write code that people are generally gonna use or that solves a problem. Um, a lot of the times it's the client side face of the application that they're building. You do not have to be a maths whiz or a super genius. I never went to college, I never went to university. I'm terrible at maths, but I'm, here I am as a senior software engineer. And that was after going through a career change when I was 30 years old. And by the way, five years ago, I did leave a coding bootcamp and today I'm a senior software engineer and I've helped hundreds of other people do the same. So if you are starting out in your career or if you're a junior to mid-level engineer wanting to level up to a senior engineer, check out the link in the comments to my community. I have a weekly coaching call sessions. We bring in industry experts. We answer your questions daily and we teach you how to accelerate your career from the ground up okay we've done number five what's number six penetration tester clear your mind you nasty person so cyber security actually gets two points on this list because we've already covered the blue team now we're going to cover the red team go penetration testers otherwise known as ethical hackers or pen testers what is their job well their job is essentially to break into things digitally not physically don't go breaking into things physically. Now, it does sound cool. I will admit it sounds really cool, but there is also a lot of legislation and laws around this as well. Who would it suit? People who want to have a good level of networking knowledge, people who want to find vulnerabilities in large organizations or small organizations, people who want to do hacking for the right reason not to extort people or steal from anyone. Would I do it? I'd like to think, yes, I would do it, but the only reason I'd do it is because it looks really cool. But I think once I actually did the job and obviously realized that actually there's a very important, very strategic process to it. It's not just getting on your computer and trying to break into stuff for fun. Maybe I'd find it a little bit more boring. But I still think it sounds really cool when you tell people, what do you do? I am a cybersecurity guy, Mr. Robot. I break into things, physical things. No, not physical things. Internet things. Okay, we're six deep. Tell me which ones you've been thinking about. Tell me which ones you're thinking about doing or switching to in the comments. I want to know. Let's go over the last two. Oh no, I wrote all this code and there's nobody here to help me push it. Step DevOps, bro. Is that you? All right, all jokes aside, DevOps. Now, it's briefly mentioned at the beginning, along with the cloud solutions architect, but DevOps is its own discipline. What does a DevOps engineer do? They focus on the gap between development and operations. <laughs> Build and maintain the infrastructure that our apps, websites, all run on. They enable our systems to grow when we've got a large amount of users and to shrink back down when we don't. They manage our resources, they expense our resources and they reduce costs where we need them. DevOps engineers are paid very well and they're very important to the life cycle of a tech company. With DevOps, there is a lot of config involved. There's a lot of languages like Terraform. There's a lot of scripting with languages like Bash or Python. Who is it for? I've always thought DevOps is more suited to people who again like to know more about networking, care about the intricacies of things like what, which ports do which, is it HTTP, is it HTTPS, how do you secure the cloud, how do you make sure a VPC is safe from people accessing it. More so config over code. Would I do it? I'm a bit torn. I'm not a huge fan of config like I said before, I've done it as a data engineer and I like being more involved with the code. I would do it for the money, it pays very well. And I do it for the excitement of knowing more about the cloud services that we use on everyday life. But hey, we are near the end. So what's number eight, what comes last? And you know what? This actually surprised me that this was number eight on the list of the most lucrative technology areas of this year. But it is, da -da 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 -da. blockchain engineer. I know what you're thinking. I would have thought that was number one. I thought that would be number one, but it isn't. I don't know why. Now don't get me wrong, blockchain engineers make a ton of money, but it's a smaller area of the larger market. Web3 is still quite new, we're still innovating there. So the majority of engineers are still working in Web2, Web2 is still paying the most. Blockchain engineers, what do they do? They build decentralized applications on the blockchain. <laughs> Duh. They also write contracts and build some complex systems. If you are an adventurous person, if you want to be on the frontier of software development, then hey, Web3 is where well, you should probably be looking. It's an exciting time to be in there. There's a lot going on and there are a lot of unicorns being built. Is it for me? Yeah, I've done a little bit in the past. I would get more into it if the opportunity came, but right now in my career, I'm not at the level where I want to sort of pivot to solving problems on Web3 when there are so many problems to solve still 
in Web2. Okay, having helped hundreds of software engineers break into the industry and also build their career from mid to senior and above, I'd love for you to check out my community. If you are a junior engineer, then check out the Junior Developer Survival Guide newsletter that I write on Substack. It will give you all the information you need to accelerate your career. Catch you in the next one.